Hello everyone, welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 and in this video we're going to be previewing day 5 of Royal Ascot, the final day. I just want to apologise for not getting any winners again. If you've um, been watching me throughout the week, I want to apologise for not giving you a winner so far at Royal Ascot. It's been really hard. I know quite a lot of uh, my colleagues in the tipping world have drawn blanks this week. It hasn't been that easy. A lot of favourites haven't won and then if you want to take on the favourites, which I'm one of those people that always want to take on the favourites normally, uh, it's been very very hard to try and find one to take them on with and actually get the right uh, winner so yeah I want to apologize there. I thought we were going to break our duck with magnetic charm wasn't to be but it was still a good story for Hayley Turner to break that hoodoo about the female jockeys um, winning at Royal Ascot she became the second female jockey ever to win at Royal Ascot so I'm pleased for that it was a really good story for Jarrah Prince as well ran a good race finishing third got the each way return but um, yeah, that's all we had to write home about today. We've had a few placed efforts this week, a few close calls, a bit of um, unluckiness, if that's a word. We haven't really been lucky this week at all, but hopefully we can turn things around tomorrow and end with some winners. Now, it all starts tomorrow in the 2.30 at Cheshire in the Listed Contest, over seven furlongs. And no pay, Y Fernandez is the current favourite tomorrow. Uh, trained by uh, Aidan O'Brien, Ryan Moore, but for the ride. Five to four, but makes at the moment. Pretty, pretty short, in my opinion. Cost 900,000 guineas as a yearling and won well on his debut at the Curra. But I just think the form of that race hasn't really worked out too well so far. Pinatobo, I think, has got a very good chance tomorrow for the Godolphin operation. Trained by Charlie Appleby and James Doyle was booked for the ride. Now, this horse is two from two so far. One on debut at a Wolverhampton beat in Platinum Star, finished second in the Windsor Castle earlier in the week and beat O Purple Rain of Richard Hannans next time out at Epsom and churned some really good speed. Year of the Tiger and Harper Crates are also um, entered for Aidan O'Brien, but we'll have to assess how they'll come on, but they're definitely worth a mention in my summing up. But my selection tomorrow is Highland Chief for Raoul Silver and Paul Cole, 16 to one with bookmakers at the moment, won very well over five furlongs at Newbury. I was there that day and yeah, he, he had really no right to win over five furlongs. He should be racing over further, but he must've been so far ahead as a two year old. He's by Glen Eagles as well, has made a good start to his sire career. And I think this was Glen Eagles first progeny to win for him. So Highland Chief tomorrow with a man who's done it before in this race, Paul Cole won the race back in 2013 with a similar profile to Berkshire, who was his winner back then. I think Highland Chief tomorrow has got a very good chance going close at a massive price. And that's gonna be the first tip to uh, get us underway. We then go to the Jersey Stakes, the 305 Group Prix over seven furlongs. Space Blues is the right favourite for this race. Trained by Charlie Appleby, James Dilbert for the ride. 11 of four favourite with firms at the moment. Won a listed race at Epsom last time out and won the time before that as well. A decent handicap at York. Got well beaten on his uh, parents' Satter Newbury, but he's come on for that. And I think he's got a very good chance of going close tomorrow, but I'm going to take him on. So perfect has to come into the reckoning for Aidan O'Brien and Ryan Moore. Third in a Group 3 Phillies at Newbury on debut, and then stepped up to win a Group 3 at Nace next time out. I'm going to be taking on so perfect because Phillies haven't got the best record in this race. Happy Power as well could go well after winning a decent listed event at York, taking on older horses next time out for Aidan O'Brien. But my selection is going to be Urban Icon, who, who I think it's a good each way bet, 10 to 1 for Richard Hannon and Tom Mark 1 tomorrow. Finished second behind Space Blues uh, last time out, but I thought actually um, Urban Icon was a bit unlucky that day. I think more of a stiffer um, seven furlongs is definitely going to suit him. He finished eighth in the Guineas, where that was probably a little bit too far for him, stretched him. Finished third in the Green in the time before that. I think he's got a lot of things in his favour tomorrow, and Urban Icon is going to be my selection, 10 to 1 each way tomorrow, and that's the tip in the second race at Royal Ascot on day five. We then go to the Hardwick next, where we see the return turn of Massar, a group two race over mile and uh, three furlongs, trained by James Doyle, oh no it's not trained, it's ridden by James Doyle and Charlie Appleby's booked for the ride tomorrow, again this is an 11-4 favourite, not seen since winning the Epsom Derby which I think makes him vulnerable and I think you got to lay him tomorrow, I think you probably need the run, Defoe won the group one a Coronation Cup at Epsom last time out for Andrea Zaney and Roger Verin, I'm going to take Defoe on as well because I just think tomorrow he might be a bit vulnerable, Seven France as well has got to come into the reckoning for Ryan Moore and Aino Brian, 9-2 but makes at the moment and ran very well at York behind Stradivarius and we've seen the form work out already and also as well if you go back to his run at Navan he was behind Master of Reality that day who actually made the first three in the Gold Cup Lati Dahl will be popular tomorrow as well for Frankie Dettori and also as well Mirage Dancer will be for Sir Michael Stout but my selection is going to be Salloween uh, for Oisin Murphy and Sylvester Kirk been very unlucky knocking at the door 
the last couple of times. And he's 12 to 1 with bookmakers at the moment, which I think is a good each way bet. Won a listed race over the course and distance uh, back in May and then finished third in the Coronation Cup last time out in a very good race. Now, there's been a bit more cut in the ground this week. And if the um, if the ground on the round course can still have a bit of juice in it, I think Salloween might have his conditions. Even though he's been um, denied at the top table quite a few times, he's never had his ground conditions. And I think tomorrow, if the juice can stay there, I think he's a massive player. And at 12-1, to 1, I'll be willing to take a chance on him each way. We then go to the Diamond Jubilee Stakes. Over six furlongs, Blue Point is a worthy favourite, fantastic course record, only lost when he was a three-year-old in the Commonwealth Cup, but he won the King's Stand earlier in the week, but I just worry if he's had a little bit of a hard turnaround, he's 5-2 to two at the current time of recording, but I'm going to take him on, Invincible Army, PJ McDonald and James Tate, this has been his target since winning the Group 2 Duke of York at um, the Dante meeting uh, back last month. He's 9-2. He's actually won over the course and distance, but I think he's vulnerable. Tin Man, um, Bound for Nowhere, all got to be in the sum up here, but my selection is going to be Sam Zamali, who's 16-1 to one, but makes at the moment. Trained by James McDonald. No, it's not trained by. It's trained by Richard Fahey, and James McDonald is booked for the ride tomorrow. This horse has got a good course record uh, when he's been at Ascot. He finished second in the Commonwealth Cup last year behind Ektidar, and then he won the Champion Sprint on the Champions day last year and I think returning back to one of his more favourable tracks will definitely suit him. Ignore the run at Hamilton last time out. He probably needed it. Things didn't go his way. If he's very prominent tomorrow, he could have a major say in the race. And I think at 16 to 1, he's such a big price there. I'm going to have a, a bit of money on him each way. We then go to the Wokingham. Um, the next selection is going to be Hey Jonesy for um, Kevin Stott and Kevin Ryan. I know Kate Byron's favourite at the moment, but I'm going to be taking him on. Hey Jonesy, I think, is now off a good mark of 106 tomorrow after running in some really decent group races I think dropping into a handicap dropping back in class will see him in good stead he finished fifth in the Commonwealth Cup last year and if he repeats that a 20 to 1 shot with multiple put bakers I think he's got to go very close tomorrow the last race tomorrow is the Queen Alexandra stakes over two and a half miles and um, my selection here, I'm not going to go into the race too much, even though Black Court and Max Dynamite are interested in runners. My selection is You Never Call um, for uh, Kim Bailey and James Doyle. Round about 7-1 with bookmakers at the moment is a good each way bet. Now this horse um, is actually making his flat debut tomorrow by Yates, who won the Ascot Gold Cup multiple times. I think this horse tomorrow could be the one you want to be on. He won a good race at uh, Sandown last time we saw him over jumps back in April. And I think he's been kept in mind for this. Good ground is key to him. He doesn't want it too much of a slog. And for me, at 7-1 to tomorrow, I think he's a good each way bet to end off the meeting. So hopefully uh, we can have some winners tomorrow at Royal Ascot. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button for more videos here on my YouTube channel, Lucky Loaders 15 You can also follow me on Twitter as well using my handle, at LuckyLoaders15, for all links to my work. And that's all I've got to say. So please gamble responsibly. Hopefully we can have some winners tomorrow and we'll be seeing you soon.